Hello everybody and welcome back to another video tutorial. In this video tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to draft a notch lapel and collar. The lapel is defined as a part on each side of a coat or jacket immediately below the collar which is folded back on either side of the front opening. There are three main types of lapel and collar. The notch lapel and collar, which would be the focus of this tutorial. The peak lapel and collar. And the shawl lapel and collar. The notch lapel is defined by a notch where the bottom of the collar and the top of the lapel connect at a 75 to 90 degree angle. The notch lapel always point outward and is partitioned from the top collar. The notch lapel is the most common type of all the three lapels. For this reason, they are considered the least formal of all the three types of lapel. They are common in your everyday work suits, jackets, and coats. The peak lapel is defined by edges pointing towards your shoulders. Peak lapels always point upward and are partitioned from the top collar. Of the three types of lapel, peak collars are considered to be the most formal and most traditional. The shell lapel is defined as a continuous curve without breaks or points such as the notched or peaked lapels. A shawl lapel is a solid rounded piece of fabric that wraps all the way around. However, this fabric that forms the shawl lapel often comes in a satin fabric. Because the shawl lapel is a continuous curve and is often made from a satin fabric, for these two reasons, the shawl lapel are considered the most relaxed and elegant of all the three lapel types. Each lapel has what is called a lapel roll, and the lapel roll is the fall and curl of the lapel from the break of the collar to the first button. There are three standard types of lapel width. The slim width, which measures from two and a quarter inches to two and three quarter inches. The regular width, which measures three inches to three and a half inches. And the wide width, which measures from three and three quarter inches to four and a half inches. However, all the standard width are based on personal preference. You can make your lapel as slim or as wide as you want it to be. Start by tracing out your back and front sloper from your basic bodice pattern. Because you're going to be altering the design on your back and front bodice, it's always best to trace out a copy so that you can have your original basic bodies intact and safe to use later for other designs. When tracing out your front sloper, leave enough space at the center front and at the neck area. You will need that space at the center front of the sloper to draft the lapel and the space at the neck area to draft the collar. Drop the back sloper neckline by a quarter inch at neck and shoulder and blend the quarter inch drop back into the original neck curve. From the original neck point, mark and square backwards a quarter inch on the front sloper. That quarter inch is the same quarter inch drop that you did on the back sloper and it's for the same reason, to create wearing ease. I did a quick comparison of the front and back sloper at the shoulder. You could see that the shoulder length matches. The original neck point matches and the quarter inch neck drop matches. Again from the original neck point, mark and square out one inch. That one inch will represent the collar stand.
to recap, we have two points from the original neck point on the front slipper. The one inch point, that is the color stand, and the quarter inch point backwards, that is the neck drop. From the center front of your slipper at the hem, mark and square out a one inch extension. Then from that point, draw an extended vertical line to the neck point at center front. Next, extend the waistline to the 1 inch extension line. Then from that point at the extension line, measure up 1 inch. That point will be our break point. The break point is where the lapel roll ends. And right on the same level is your button placement. The button placement could be on the same level as the break point or could be exactly at the waist which is one inch below the break point. Next, draw a line to connect the break point to the end point of the one inch collar stand. Label your sloper. The break point is where the roll line intersects the one inch extension line at the center front. The depth point is where the roll line intersects the center front line and it's where the lapel overlaps. The one inch mark at the neck point is the collar stand and the one inch extension line at the center front is the extension front line. I erase the extension line up to the break point because it might get a little bit confusing with so many lines going in different directions. Next, fold your paper along the roll line to begin the drafting of the lapel. Then trace along the original neckline using a tracing wheel to help you transfer the neckline outline onto the other side of the paper. I outlined the traced neckline with a dashed line to differentiate it from the original neckline. When you're done tracing out your neckline, open up and spread out your paper. Then draw a line that is 2 and 3 quarter inches long, making sure the line starts at the point where the roll line and the neckline intersects and touches the end point of the traced neck curve. Then draw a slant line that connects the end point of the lapel and the break point. Then fold your paper again at the roll line to trace your lapel onto the other side of your paper. Use a tracing wheel to trace out the outline of the lapel and then Highlight your traced lapel with your pencil or marker. Next, erase the outline of the lapel on the inside of the sloper because you will not be needing that lapel anymore. Next, measure the back sloper neck length. Mm -hmm. 
measure from one end of the back neck to the other end of the back neck along the new neck curve. Then from the one quarter inch point on the front sloper, draw a line that is the measurement of the back neck length that you measured earlier. Next, find the midpoint or halfway point of the back neck line. You could do the calculation or use your tape measure to measure the length of the back neck line, then fold it in two to find the midpoint. And from that point, measure backward half an inch at a 90 degree angle. Using your curved ruler, draw a curve that blends back into the neckline making sure it touches the midpoint mark. Next, draw a guideline from the tip of the lapel all the way up. Then draw a line from the half an inch point mark at a 90 degree angle all the way to intersect the guideline. That line would be our center back collar line. Next, find the midpoint of the lapel width. Use your measuring tape to measure the length of the lapel width, then fold it in two to find the midpoint. Next, measure how far apart or the distance you want your lapel seam to be from your collar seam along the guideline. I want my lapel to be three and a quarter inches apart from my collar. From the end point of the back collar indicated by my finger, measure out the distance of the back neck. Then using a curved ruler, draw a curve to connect the end point of the slant line and the end point of the center back mark. From the end point of the center back line, measure out one inch and mark. Draw a parallel line from the end point of the roll line to the center back line. Next, draw a slight curve that connects the end point of the lapel roll line to the end point of the parallel line at the center back line. That line is our collar roll line and it blends back into the lapel roll line. Now I'm going to highlight my notch lapel with my marker to make it more visible. and then notch all the critical points that are important when sewing. Next, get a fresh piece of paper, then trace out your collar. Make sure you mark all your notches and vital points. Finally, add the half an inch seam allowance or sewing allowance all around your sloper. If the collar doesn't fit around the neckline of your pattern, 
meaning if it's shorter than the neckline of your pattern, then expand the collar by using a slash and spread method. Draw three slash lines that are one inch apart, then cut through the slash line up to the tip of the collar, but do not cut through the collar completely. Next, place your slashed collar on a new paper. Then spread each panel a quarter inch apart and tape down. Next, redraw the outline of your collar. Then cut out your new collar. Okay everyone, we've come to the end of this tutorial. If I have made the concept of drafting a notch lapel and collar a little bit easier to understand and helped further your fashion designing experience, please subscribe to my channel, give this video a thumbs up, share and leave your comment down below. Until my next video, bye and good luck.